Hey guys, today we want to introduce a new product from Rife, the 5 Volt Plus. This is a revolutionary product that we feel uh, there's a hole in the market for. And from wiring a lot of cars and being at the track supporting a lot of racers, uh, we saw a lot of problems with the reference signal from the ECU from multiple different manufacturers, and this will fix that. As a sensor manufacturer, we get to experience and support a lot of different end users with different styles of motorsports with different styles of ECU. And that's really where this product came about. It was a brainchild of ours to help fix a lot of the problems that the end user has with systems and on race day and to make more reliable race cars. So let's start at the beginning here. All of the pressure sensors and data sensors in your car are ran off a 5 volt reference signal from your ECU. Now depending on the ECU manufacturer, they achieve this 5 volts a couple different ways. The battery voltage coming into the ECU is then regulated down to 5 volts. 5 volts isn't always 5 volts though, it may be 4.93, 4.95. The ECU then takes this calculation off of the data that you entered in the system to determine the pressure, the travel range, the ride height, or the speed into a number that you can read on your data log. Now this reference voltage is crucial to the sensor's output because that's what's supplying the sensor is transmitting back to the ECU. Depending on the ECU manufacturer, it may only have one 5 volt reference, or maybe it has two, but they're still tied together inside. Now there is amperage involved on this circuit. All of the sensors do draw a very small milliamp value. Depending on the sensor type or the amount of sensors, the, the milliamps can go up. So each ECU manufacturer has a determined milliamp rating of this 5 volt based on the electronics in that ECU. We've seen as little as 100 milliamps up to about 200 milliamps to provide all of the sensors in your car with five volts. If you have one sensor or if you have 25 sensors, they're all using that one amplifier. So pretend we have our car wired in a traditional manner. The five volt reference coming out of our ZCU is then split, spliced into all of our sensors. Now all of our sensors, like we said, are drawing a certain amount of milliamps, some a little more than others. Say we have a 100 milliamp circuit and now we have 80, 90, or say 120 milliamps of sensors drawing this down. Our five volts or our 4.93 volts is now fluctuating. So it's not steady depending on the uses of the sensor. If it's, if it's reading below what the ECU is commanding it, now our sensor scaling is off and our sensor data input is off. If you notice that your pressure sensors are kind of wavy or your data is a little um, you know, not consistent, a lot of this is caused from the actual 5 volt reference not being consistent itself. This voltage needs to stay steady so that way all of your sensors can transmit back a steady signal to the ECU um, for the math channels and the ECU and then for your data collection for your data log. Picture it as an alternator on your car. Your alternator is trying to support the battery. Now you added a subwoofer, um, you added all of these things and now you see your lights starting to dim down because the voltage is dimming down. The same thing can happen to our sensors. It's happening a lot faster and a lot smaller of a scale. Remember, we're talking tenths of a volt to read uh, pressure data, pressure reading that's controlling your fueling, controlling your timing, uh, controlling your whole race car. Okay, so now you have a visualization of what's happening. We have a 5 volts coming out of our ECU providing uh, the reference signal that these sensors need to run on. But now we're thinking we have our, our wheel and our shock basically hooked up to our crankshaft position sensor or our map sensor that are, are crucial for your engine to run. If something happens along this circuit to take that down, uh, your vehicle is going to stop running. It could misfire um, and cause a lot of damage. So all of that leads us to why we made this product. This product is going to take the reference signal from your ECU mimic that number. If it's 4.93, it's going to transmit 4.93. That's going to go spread over four separate protected channels through this box and supply 300 milliamps per channel of solid reference voltage to your sensors. So as I said, the 5 volt plus will mimic the reference voltage from your ECU. So the ECU is going to send this reference voltage to the 5 volt plus. If the 5 volts plus internal electronics are going to pull from your battery. It's going to be wired to your battery, 8 volt to 16 volt, uh, any automotive system will work, and then it's going to create its own voltage for the outputs. Doing this, we can supply 300 milliamps per channel. So our ECU is only outputting 150 milliamps, which earlier we said may not be enough. So we're going to pull from the battery, create our own circuit, 300 milliamps per channel. So you see we have a little representation of a car wired without the 5 volt plus and a car wired with the 5 volt plus. In a standard system, we have the 5 volt reference coming out. We're going to have one, two, or, or multiple splices going to every sensor that's in the car, right? What we've seen in the field with this is someone comes back and they're like, oh, uh, my fuel pressure sensor stopped working. We go look at the data log. Well, it turns out 
it looks like eight or nine or all of the sensors stop working. And the reason for this is because we've had one single failure on the line going to a sensor or uh, the ride height sensor hit something on the racetrack and broke off. Now our five volt reference is shorted, which comes back to this splice, which then takes out all of these sensors. So one sensor failure, one wiring compromise, takes out your whole, you lose your pass. You lose the race, you get back to the pit, everything's working fine. You're like, car's running, you're reading your sensors, we don't know which, what, what happened. Turns out the shock sensor's bent and only under a certain amount of travel does it short the five volts out. So finding that problem then is kind of a needle in a haystack because it's not broken all the time. An intermittent problem like that is almost impossible to diagnose. And on a race car where you have to run the car to diagnose it, you can really lose a lot of time, a lot of money, uh, and have a lot of issues. Okay, so now we have the same car, same ECU, wired with the five volt plus in the middle. What we've done now is separated our four channels into segments in the car. So I would like to separate it into suspension, uh, diagnostic for wheel speed sensor, drive shaft sensor, ride height sensor, then I call these mission critical sensors. So anything that the car needs to go down the racetrack on. Now every car may be a little different. For me it's going to be engine speed, manifold pressure, fuel pressure, uh, probably drive shaft sensor on my car just for traction control, but um, that's going to be up to you. So that way these are all protected. So if a shock sensor is bent and goes out or the wiring gets cut up here, now with this box, only these sensors are going to quit operating. When that happens, the output LED on our box will then turn the red. All of the other sensors are going to work. So you're going to get back. You won't even know it. You made your pass. Everything was good. You get back, check your data log. Oh no, my shock sensor stopped working. So now you know that your problem is on this branch of your wiring or only these four sensors. So this is gonna increase your time between rounds to diagnose your problem, be able to fix it, or just say, you know what? I don't care, I'm racing out shock sensors today. Close the laptop, keep going because my other sensors are protected. So on our box, we have five LEDs. One off to the side labeled five volts. This is our reference voltage coming to our ECU. So this is gonna be a short wire from the ECU to this box. Green, everything's good, we're within our five volts. Red, the voltage is low. Flashing red, the voltage is high because you may have a short to power um, that can bring the voltage up and also cause issues. The output LEDs are the same things. Each channel has two pins, channel one, channel two, three, and four. These will all be green when operating normal. If there's a short circuit or the voltage is low on a channel, it will go to red. Or if the voltage is high on the channel, it will flash red to help you diagnose what your problem is. We use a 12 pin DTM connector for this box. It's gonna have battery voltage input, chassis ground input, the five volt reference from your ECU as an input, and then it's gonna have two outputs per channel. So we had enough pins left over where we can give you two. It's gonna help you with your splices. Each channel gets two pins for you to make your own wiring. So this product does take our five volt reference and it does put it over multiple channels, but it's a lot more than a breakout box. As you saw, it's providing more amperage to the circuits and protection on the circuits. Paired with our current products, our right blocks or our DTM hubs, you can run one reference voltage out of here to supply four sensors on each thing, simplify wiring very easily and protect your car. We recommend that you mount this close to your ECU so that way the five volt reference line going to this is short and won't be, uh, has less chance of being compromised. Naturally, we're gonna mount our electronics away from CDI boxes and things that cause a lot of RF noise because that's gonna protect the reference voltage. Remember, this reference voltage is crucial in good data for your race cars. We offer a roll bar mount, you can mount this easy, or you can flush mount it to any surface. If you have an extremely censored out car and you want to run two of these boxes, split your system up, you can run two. You're just going to split your reference voltage to go to one and then go to the other, and they'll work perfectly side by side, as many as you'd like to put on your car. In saying that, if you're running the 5 volt plus, all of your 5 volt sensors, anything wired to your car, should go through this box. If you decide for some reason to split this out to somewhere, this one ever you split it out to could take down the rest, right? So we're, our ECU is going to the box and then everything all coming off of that. So if you're planning your next build, uh, you have a wiring shop in mind, make sure you tell them about this box. You use this for the plan out. If you have an existing car that's already wired, check your diagram where your splices are. You can undo them and bring them back here to the five volt plus to protect your sensors. Okay, and again, having 300 milliamps per channel to your sensor is gonna provide the strongest signal reference to the sensor to have nice, reliable data on your ECU. Uh, we torture tested one of these prototypes uh, in El Toro over six summer, and reviewing the data logs in that car is some of the, some of the cleanest data signals that we've ever seen uh, on that car to date. This product can be used with any ECU 
or dash. A lot of people will use a, a dash display as a data logger for sensors. They notoriously have a weak signal as well. So wire this in, plan it in your next build. We've always proud ourselves on making a high quality, good data sensor. And we've also realized that there's shortcomings coming from the ECUs and from the wiring. And hopefully this bridges the gap so you get the best data possible. Check us out, rifesensors.com for this and all the sensors you need to support your project.